after Al Halaqi reasserts the government's keenness to deliver relief and humanitarian assistance to every Syrian citizen. Syrian Arab army inflicts heavy casualties among the terrorists in Aleppo, Homs, and Dara. Presidential election starts in Egypt to choose between Assisi and Sabahi amidst heavy security measures. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Irado Krikorian from the News Center in Damascus. Presiding over a meeting for the Relief Committee today, Prime Minister Wa'il al-Halaqi asserted the government's keenness, according to directives from President Bashar al-Assad, to deliver the relief and humanitarian assistance to every Syrian citizen, wherever he was, on the Syrian land, with the international organizations which are specialized in the humanitarian affairs according to the national standards. Al-Halaqi clarified that in parallel with the accomplishments in the relief domain, the government is working on the rehabilitation of the areas which were freed from the armed terrorist groups in order to facilitate the return of the residents to there. al halaqi stressed that the government is responsible for the relief work and that any relief work by the international organizations or social initiatives should be done in cooperation with the government and should demonstrate the spirit of a teamwork. During the meeting, Minister of Social Affairs Dr. Kinda Shomat presented a briefing on the latest developments in the relief domain and the mechanisms of distributing humanitarian assistance. With the presence of a number of officers from the Syrian Arab Army and with participation of several local and public activities from Maloula and the surrounding towns, Syrian Arab Army restored a statue for Virgin Mary. The statue was broken by the terrorists who wreaked havoc in the town, but the Syrian Arab Army retrieved it and returned it to its place in the monastery of Marsarkis and Bachos in Maloula after finishing its restoration works in cooperation with local societies. In Aleppo, Syrian Arab army units killed many terrorists and injured others in the neighborhoods of Bani Zaid, as sukkari Bustan al-Qasr, Salah al-Din, and the Old City. Syrian Arab army units targeted the terrorist gatherings in Al-Muslimiyya, Mari'a, Hanano al-Hulluk, Anadan, Al-Atarib, and Al-Layramun, inflicting heavy casualties among the terrorists. Syrian Arab army units also eliminated many terrorists in Aquarius, Rasm al-Abud, and Al-Jadida in the eastern countryside of Aleppo, and also in Khan al-Asr in the southwestern countryside of the city. Meanwhile, Syrian Arab army destroyed a number of vehicles, killing all terrorists inside, around Hreita and Darit Azzaq, Firda'il, Tal Rifat, Al Castillo, and Hendarat. A military source said that the Syrian Arab army units destroyed terrorist hideouts and gatherings in Taldaw, Kafirlaha, and Nasiriya, and Asamalil in Al Hula, and eliminated a number of them. The source added that the Syrian Arab army units eliminated an armed terrorist group in Arrastan and destroyed terrorist gatherings in Talbise, Al Qabban, and Al Ghajar in Homs countryside. The terrorist group of Jabhat al-Nusra claimed responsibility for the two terrorist car bombs which rocked the city of Homs and its countryside and led to the killing and injury of several citizens. The terrorist group admitted in a statement reported by the French news agency that the twin car bombs were detonated to kill as many people as possible. It is to be mentioned that Jabhat al-Nusra that belongs to Al-Qaeda organization and supported by foreign sites claimed responsibilities for several terrorist explosions that took place in several Syrian cities during the past few months. A source in Homs Governorate stressed that terrorists blew up a car bomb they parked near a garage in a Zahra neighborhood, killing 10 citizens and injuring another 30. The second car went off under Homs Refinery Bridge on the way between Homs and Tartus provinces, wounding a number of citizens.
The Syrian Arab Army units eliminated several terrorists and injured others and destroyed their criminal tools by targeting their gatherings in Dar'a al-Balad and Dar'a countryside. A military source said that the Syrian Arab Army units destroyed a tunnel used by the armed terrorist groups to the north of Al-Yarmouk school in Al-Manshiya neighborhood in Dar'a al-Balad and killed all terrorists inside. The source added that the Syrian Arab Army units targeted terrorist gatherings in Atman town in Dar'a countryside, killing the terrorists inside and destroyed their vehicle. In Paris, objecting to the French authorities' decision to prevent the Syrian citizens in France from exercising their right in voting for a president, the Syrian community held symbolic elections. Syrian citizens gathered near Eiffel Tower in Paris to vote as they erected a tent as a polling center and posted the pictures of the three presidential candidates and held symbolic elections. Members of the Syrian Students' Union in France registered the names of the voters in lists and distributed ballots, enabling electorates to choose one of the three presidential candidates. The voters asserted that by taking part in these symbolic elections, they are sending a message to the French government and to the whole world that the Syrians are the ones who draw the future of their country and no one is able to rob them of their right in building their independent and sovereign country. In cooperation with the Syrian community in Australia, National Union of Syrian Students has staged a rally in Sydney and Adelaide cities. In Buenos Aires, the municipality of Buenos Aires has held a mass rally to honor the Syrian community in Argentina. The rally was held in one of the main streets of the city. Welcome back. Visiting Al-Aqsa Mosque, Pope Francis has been briefed on the Israel's violations against the Palestinian people and the holy sites in the occupied territories. The Pope met the Grand Mufti of Occupied Jerusalem and the Holy Land, Sheikh Mohammed Hussein, with the presence of Muslim and Christian figures. During his visit, Pope Francis called for peace and justice in the Holy Land, pointing out that he comes to the Holy Land as a pilgrim to meet the Muslims, Christians and Jews. He added that we all have to call for peace and justice by praying to the Almighty. He underlined the importance of working to realize peace and justice and not to resort to violence in the name of God. Egyptians have added today to the polling stations to cast their ballots to elect a new president to the country among the two runners, Field Marshal Abdel Fattah Sisi and Mr. Hamdin Sabahi. About 54 million Egyptians are expected to vote under the supervision of 16,000 judges in different parts of the country. The committee of the presidential elections said that the boxes would be sealed today to be opened again tomorrow. The presidential elections are being carried out under strict security measures. In a relevant context, anonymous persons have set tires on fire along the main road near Kardasa city in Al Jiza in an attempt to cause traffic jam to stop people from reaching the polling stations to cast their ballots. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that Russia respects the will of the Ukrainian people, adding that Kiev's authorities had to respect its people and the interests of all political powers. In a joint press conference with his South Sudanese counterpart, Bernaba Benjamin, Lavrov said that Moscow was willing to hold talks with Pyotr Boshinko, the winner of the presidential elections, according to the preliminary results. Ravrov voiced hope that the new authorities in Ukraine would adhere to the roadmap proposed by security and cooperation organization in Europe to settle the crisis. Finally, the authorities in Donetsk Republic, which is located to the east of Ukraine, imposed high military alert in the country. The head of the presidential committee of the High Council in the Republic, Denis Bohelin, said that the military alert is to purge the Donetsk lands from the units of the Ukrainian army that were spread by Kiev authorities in its military campaign against the protesting opposition. Bohelin stressed that dialogue between Donetsk Republic and Kiev authorities is possible, but through intermediates. 
He showed readiness to discuss the issue of exchanging detainees and the withdrawal of the Ukrainian forces from the Republic's lands. On the other hand, Lugansk Republic imposed a military alert as the two republics of Donetsk and Lugansk decided to establish a confederate union. They called it Noborossia. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vanny Gunjan, but after a short break.